Catsters, it's Dr. Karen. If you've ever had to give your cat medication, whether that be applying a flea treatment, giving a worming tablet or worming paste, putting in eye drops, or even giving them some antibiotics, you'll know that it's not always as easy as it sounds. So with the help of some of my cats, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for successful medication administration. Before you get started, there's a couple of things I'd like to suggest. One is to trim your cat's claws and you can check out my video on how to do that. And also I'd recommend having a look at my article and video on how to safely restrain your cat. These will go a long way to making these next steps a lot more successful. Like with most things, preparation is the key to success. And that means having everything you're going to need to hand before you get started. So I've got myself treats that Clutch definitely already knows are here, so I'm trying to keep them hidden. I've got a non-slip mat and a towel. If you see my video on safety restraining cats, you'll know that I don't tend to towel wrap cats when I'm giving medications, but it's always good to have something there just in case, especially if you're going to try and give a tablet to a particularly uncooperative cat. I'm going to start by giving Clutch some eye drops and I'm going to actually give you a side-by-side -side comparison on medicating a very cooperative cat versus a cat that is less enthusiastic about this process to show you how I might adapt what we're doing to make sure that we're getting the job done. So, I've got clutch, I've got treats, and I've got eye drops. So I tend to give the eye drops <laughs> I tend to give the eye drops using my right hand, my dominant hand, and I'll hold on to him using my left hand. So I find the best way to deliver eye drops to any animal is to come from over the top rather than coming front on. It's a lot less confrontational and threatening if you come from over the top. So basically what you're gonna to need to do is use one hand to immobilize the head you're actually going to need the hand that's holding the drops to also hold and tilt the, the head up a little bit as well. So I'll show you what I mean and we'll see if Clutch is uh, cooperative. All right, buddy. Come here, mate. So I'm going to sort of tuck his body in against me here. I'm going to tilt his head back. And then it all goes pear-shaped. Luckily for us, there's Zazzles. So you can see that wasn't overly successful. That's okay. There's always another option. So this is a little technique that I developed when I had to give eye drops to my very reluctant chihuahua. And it involves using one of these, a little cotton ball. It will mean you'll end up using more of your eye drops in the end, but it's certainly better to get them in than not at all. So what I'm gonna do is take a tiny bit of that cotton ball and make the ends sort of quite wet with the eye drops. I'm then wiping the eyes, but squeezing liquid out of it as I go. Now, I thought that Clutch was going to be our cooperative cat, but sometimes you can't predict. So applying a spot on flea product might sound really straightforward to some people, but some cats really, really resent it. And I think a lot of it is to do with the sort of the cold feeling on the skin or the really strong smell of those products. And a lot of people I think really, really get a bit caught up with the making sure it's really getting in there on the skin. And that is definitely important, 
but I think probably focusing more on getting it in the right location rather than necessarily always being able to sort of see that skin. In a short hair cap like Zazzle's here, that is quite easy. You can part the fur, you can see where you're gonna go. But if you've got a, a hair cap with a really thick coat or long coat, it's not always easy. And by the time you're sitting there parting the hair, trying to be able to see that skin, the cat's got fed up and trying to get away from you. So the important thing really is getting the nozzle in the right place. So I've got my stronghold here. It's one of these ones where I have to push the cap to break the seal. And then, whoop, <laughs> this is why preparation is important. And then take off the lid. So I know visually where I want to go, which is sort of just at the base of the, of the, the skull here so that she can't reach it and lick it off. So I can see where I want to go, but also I'm not that focused on looking. I'm more focused on rubbing against the base of the fur. That way, even on a long coated cat, as long as you're rubbing in, getting in to the skin, you're going to get to the right location. And we're done. Zelda is definitely not a very willing volunteer. Um, but she does occasionally need some liquid medication uh, to deal with her hairballs. I use sort of a, a cat laxative type of product. I'm not going to give her her full normal dose right now. I'm just going to give her a little taster uh, just to demonstrate how to give a cat a liquid using sort of a, a syringe type of device. She will sometimes eat it mixed with her food, but not always. So I do occasionally have to give it to her this way. Hey, Dylan. So I need to hold the head firmly, but not using too much pressure or force. And the tip is to try to tilt the head as far up as possible because that makes the lower jaw a little bit weaker. With a liquid, you're not having to necessarily get it all the way over the back of the tongue like you would with a tablet, but you also need to make sure it's going far enough back in the mouth so they're not just going to immediately spit it out or dribble it out. Here we go. Always warm up to it, ease into it. Don't just go straight in with the medication and scare them. I personally find it easy when I'm using a syringe to hold it in my fist and use my thumb to depress the plunger. It gives me a heck of a lot more control than if you're trying to squirt in a medication like this. So grip, plunge. Tilt back. Behind the teeth. And we're done. So this is one of those few times where a towel wrap may be required. So, get him to sit down there. has to come up over those front feet and tightly around the back. Wrapping over there. That liquid into the mouth. Some hot tips about giving tablets. One, if you're going to try and hide it in food, make sure that the tablet isn't something that tastes really horrible and bitter. I'm not suggesting that you go out and taste test all of your cat's medications, but I do know from personal experience that there are certain medications that really taste vile. And if you try and disguise them in food, it's just not going to work. Another tip is if you know something tastes horrible for a cat and they're really resistant to it, don't try crushing it and mixing it in their food. All you're gonna do is end up with a wasted bowl of food. They will notice it, they will taste it. 
Worming tablets tend to be big offenders for this one. For some reason, cats will often sniff them out and refuse to touch whatever you hid the worming tablet in. There are a few things that cats do find difficult to resist. They're not always cat friendly foods, but a few things that I have had a lot of success with is a little bit of ice cream, a little bit of cheese that you can hide a medication in. Another really great option if you've got a cat that's on multiple medications is to actually get, you can get little empty gelatin capsules and it allows you to sometimes combine medications into at least one single dose rather than trying to get two or three medications in one after the other. So that's something you can look at actually picking up if you need to give a cat multiple medications. If you are gonna try and hide medication in food, don't start with the, the piece of food with the medication in it. Now for the one we all hate, tablets. I'm going to be using some dry cat kibble here today. And I know that that's cheating a bit, but none of my cats need any tablets right now. So it doesn't seem fair to be forcing anything down that they don't require. So bear that in mind, but hopefully these techniques will still help you out if you do need to give your cat a tablet and they're not taking the medication in, in any food. So Cyril is usually quite a placid and cooperative cat. And hopefully he can demonstrate the technique that I would like to use. I'll get him on that towel so his feet are secure. I got him tucked up against me, using my elbow to keep him tucked into my body and we're having a fuss right now. It's almost like you wanting to sneak up on giving him a tablet. So we're having a nice head pat. I move from that head pat into holding his head high and that allows that jaw to become a little bit more loose. Now what I need to do is have middle finger free. That's going to hold your lower jaw down and then you can pop the tablet in using your thumb and forefinger. If you've got a cat that is becoming angry, stressed, aggressive, you don't want to use this technique. I'll be showing you next up how to use a pill giver. <laughs> Good boy. Now, if you, like me, have been met with some resistance to tablet giving, you're going to love this little invention, a pill popper or a pill giver. So it's got a soft, flexible end that you can get a tablet into and the little plunger here that will poke it in. So once you've got your tablet in there, I said you don't want it just being able to fall out, but you also don't want it to be difficult to get out. So I'm positioning the plunger just behind the tablet so it's ready to go. I've got my Cyril. And I know, again, I'm cheating a little bit with using Cyril. He is a very agreeable cat when it comes to these sorts of things. But again, I don't want to be causing my cats too much stress just to help us out with a video. So here we go. Up we go. So again, the, the important bit is getting right at the back of the mouth over the tongue. If you don't get it over the back of the tongue, they're just going to spit it back out again. So open up, use our pill giver all the way back. All done. And still purring. Hopefully this will make medicating your cat a little less daunting. And if there's anything else you'd like to know how to do, get in touch.